Hello students, in this lesson we are going to learn about inverse trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions are functions like sin x, cos x, tan x etc which you already know about. Inverse also is something that you have learnt earlier. We are going to combine both these ideas in this chapter. So let's start with the function f defined from a set x to a set y. f has an inverse if f is 1 1 and on 2. Okay? Now what does 1 1 means? 1 1 means f of x1 equals f of x2 implies x1 equals x2 and on to means the codomain of the function is the same as the range of the function okay so let's write that condition also on to means codomain equals range now let's take the trigonometric function for which we need to find inverse so let's start with sin x so first Let's take f of x is equal to sin x. Now, what is the domain of this function? It's all real numbers. So, f is defined from all real numbers to who? The range of this function is minus 1 to 1. Okay. Now, if you make the codomain the same as the range, we have taken care of this part that is the onto part. Okay. If on the other hand you define f from r to r but the range is only minus 1 comma 1 that means the range is a subset of the codomain and we won't be able to define an inverse. But by making the codomain the same as minus 1 to 1 we have ensured it is on to. Now let's look at the first condition. Is our function sin x a 1 to 1 function? No because we know that for example, sin of pi by 6 is the same as sin of 5 pi by 6. Both are equal to half. But the condition for 1 1 says that f of x1 equals f of x2 must imply x1 equals x2 and clearly the two values are not equal. Now, this is because sin x itself, the graph looks like this, right? You have a graph where for any one value of sin x, there are so many x values. So, here, 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 so many values which can give the same function value. Now, if that is the case, then it is going to be impossible to define inverse, right? Because you need both 1, 1 and on 2 conditions to be satisfied. So, what we are going to do is we are going to say, here also it extends here, right? Now, we are going to say, let us restrict the domain of sin x. So, please understand what we are doing here is we are changing the trigonometric function as we knew it earlier. The one that we knew earlier has all real numbers as domain and minus 1 to 1 as the range. Now we are saying let us take a new function sin x which goes from a subset of the original domain so that the 1 1 condition is satisfied. Now which subset should you choose? For example, suppose you take 0 to 2 pi, okay? but within 0 to 2 pi itself sin of pi by 6 and phi pi by 6 are equal for example. So, it is still not 1 1, right? Okay. What else can we choose? Now, we want all the values from minus 1 to 1. Remember, that is the range of the function. So, minus 1 is here, plus 1 is here, right? So, if you choose our values from minus 1, this will happen at minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So, minus pi by 2. 2 pi by 2 to minus 1 to 1. So, that means what? We are taking a subset of the original do domain, which means we are changing the 
sin x function by saying that we don't need all this, we only need this part. Okay, we are restricting the function to go simply from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and the function value will go from minus 1 to, so this is minus 1 to plus 1. It is a very small portion of the sin x graph. Now, why do we do this? Because if we do this, now we can define inverse of the function sin inverse x. Remember, if f goes from x to y, f inverse will go from y to x. So, sin inverse as a function will go from minus 1 to 1 to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So, now we are ready to define the inverse of the trigonometric function that we already know. But an important point to note is that we have had to change the trigonometric function, not the function behavior, but its domain itself so that we can get both 1, 1 and on 2. That means for this sin x, this is not the sin x that we are usually familiar with, right? For this sin x, we can define the inverse which is sin inverse x. Now, this means that for example, if you take sin inverse of half, what is the value of the angle for which sin theta will be half? There will be only one angle within this minus 1 to 1 and therefore, you can write this as pi by 6. Similarly, if you want sin inverse of minus 1, right? There is only one value within minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 which will give sin of that value as minus 1 and that angle is minus pi by 2. If you want sin inverse of 0, there is only one value which is 0. So, by choosing this subset, we have ensured that for each value between minus 1 to 1, there is a unique angle that we can define as sin inverse x. So, remember in sin inverse x, x belongs to the set of real numbers from minus 1 to 1 and sin inverse x will give an angle whose values can range from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 both included. Okay? So, this is how sin inverse x is defined. Now, one point I want to make here is that you will read in many places that this is the principal value. That is because we could have chosen the subset of the domain to be instead of minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, we could have chosen pi by 2 to let us say uh, 3 pi by 2. But that kind of uh, uh, domain would mean that there are multiple such things possible, which is why people refer to this as the principal value. But for this lesson's purpose and in the rest of these concepts and uh, you know whatever we will do here, I am just going to say sin inverse x means the value will go from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 without necessarily calling it the principal value, right. So, that means that by default whatever I am going to call as sin inverse x will only use the principal value, okay. This is not just for sin inverse for all the other inverse trigonometric functions, we will say that the function value is only what is usually referred to as the principal value. Let us now consider the function cos x whose inverse we want, right. Now, the graph of cos x will start from 1. For x equals 0, cos x value is 1. Again, this goes to minus 1 at x equals pi. Okay. Now, similarly, there is, so this will be minus pi by 2, this will be pi by 2, etcetera. And again, cos x is periodic and will go all the way. Now, let us say we want to define cos inverse x. So, the question is, Obviously, we cannot say cos x going from 
all real numbers to minus 1, 1 because then it won't be a 1 to 1 function. So, what is the subset of this that we should choose? Well, just like in sine inverse, if we chose minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, the problem is in this interval, cos is always positive. Look at this minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, cos is completely above the x axis. So, if you want to get all the values from minus 1 to 1, we have to choose a different interval. Well, we could choose from here, which is minus pi till 0, or more conveniently, we can choose from 0 to pi because you can see that cos goes from positive to 0 to negative within this interval. So, we want to do cos x from, so this is the modified cos x, which is 0 to pi till minus 1 to 1. Therefore, our cos inverse will be from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to pi. That will be the value of cos inverse x. Now, for example, what will be cos inverse half? So, to find that, we need to know what theta will give cos theta is equal to half, where theta is from 0 to pi. We know that that is pi by 3. So, this is pi by 3. What about cos inverse of minus 1 by root 2? For what angle will be will cos be minus 1 by root 2? Well, in 0 to pi, it is actually going to be 3 pi by 4. So, this is 3 pi by 4 because cos 3 pi by 4 is minus 1 by root 2. So, this is how we define the two most important inverse trigonometric functions that you should know about sin inverse x and cos inverse x.